meantime, though, I want to get back to regulatory reform, uh, also talking about investor confidence with our special guest uh, right, right now, who is John Bogle. Uh, he's the founder of Vanguard Funds, the president of the Bogle Financial Markets Research, and someone uh, who, as I mentioned, has been a leader, really, in fighting for investors' rights, uh, joining us from the CFA conference uh, in Boston. Jack, uh, good to see you again. It's been a long while. And it has been, Betty. It has been. And I, you know, I want to start off with what we were talking about with Peter and regulatory reform uh, and all of that fitting into basically protecting the shareholder and the investor. Uh, do you have faith that that's going to do that? Well, it's going to help. But what we have is a, a bill which is wide open in terms of implementation. There are going to have to be a lot of regulations that haven't even been thought about yet. Bank capital requirements, for example, have to be strengthened. But the bill doesn't say how much they have to be strengthened. Uh, bank balance sheets have to improve, but it doesn't say how much they have to improve them. So there's a lot still to go after this bill goes through. But in, on balance, I think it is a plus. But Jack, you have, you have said yourself, though, there's only so much Congress can do. There's only so much uh, the courts can do. It's really up to the shareholders themselves to get angry, right? Well, yes, except we have a very uh, uh, an unusual nuance on all that, and that is we don't have many shareholders direct anymore. It used to be that individual shareholders own 90% of all the stocks in America, Betty. I think you know this. And now they own only 30%. It's these agents, these pension managers, institutional money managers, mutual fund managers, that control 70% of all stocks. And I fear that these managers are operating in their own interest mm -hmm. rather than the interests of their ultimate beneficiaries. So we have to fix that. Jack, and the bill so, does nothing about that. No, and uh, you know, and I know that you've been a big advocate of that. But Jack, uh, with uh, you know, talking about protecting investors and, and having faith in the markets, uh, what do you make of what happened on May 6 when we had that big crash? Uh, I think it's the same reason we have uh, uh, space shuttles that blow up. Technology can do a lot for us, but it is not perfect. Uh, it can it can blow up at any time, whether it's an airliner or a, a financial market uh, or anything else. Uh, we have too much faith in technology and not enough faith in human judgment. And uh, the process broke down. It broke down badly uh, for a whole lot of internal flaws in the system right. where the trading is so rapid that nobody can follow it. But but why would an investor and and to your and to your analogy, I mean, people though are the U.S. government continues to invest in the shuttle program, so we have faith in the eventual goal of it. Uh, but why would long-term investors, though, after seeing that May 6 crash, want to continue to invest long-term in the markets? Well, the, <laughs> that's a really a great question because the long-term investor is totally unaffected by what went on on that strange day in the market. You know, investing is all about owning businesses, okay? It's not about trading stocks. And you own businesses to earn a return on capital, and that's the way long-term investing goes. What we've done, though, is have long-term investing totally overwhelmed by short-term speculation, which is a folly. It's trading. But in the long run, the market's return over a decade or 20 or 30 or 40 years is going to be driven by business results and not by the insanity, daily periodic insanity in the stock market.